In this introduction to lattice-based cryptography, we will survey why this new type of cryptography is important and what a lattice is, and also take a look at an example of a cryptosystem based on lattices. The uptick in interest surrounding lattice-based cryptography comes from recent progress in the field of quantum computing. When a quantum computer of sufficient size is built, and Google for one is well on its way to achieving this goal, standard cryptosystem is based on number theory and in particular the difficulty of factoring will no longer be secure. Shor's algorithm is, is capable of factoring numbers in polynomial time when run, when run on a quantum computer, and this means RSA must be replaced. What is a lattice, and can we make hard problems with them? If you're familiar with matrices from linear algebra, lattices are a natural next step. A formal definition of a lattice is given n linearly independent vectors b1 through bn with each vector containing m entries, the lattice generated by them is defined as all possible weighted sums of those vectors when scaled by integers. We refer to b1 through bn as a basis of the lattice. This just means that given a set of vectors that point in different directions and cannot be expressed as the scaled sum of any other vector in the set, we can take the scaled sum of these vectors to create other vectors that are also in the lattice. The only difference between a vector space from linear algebra and a lattice is that any vector in the basis of a lattice can only contain integers, and when scaling a lattice basis, we can only scale by integers, though still positive, negative, or zero. For example, a simple lattice is every xy integer pair in R2. Bases are not distinct, but one such basis is simply 1, 0, 0, 1. Other bases in R2 do not include every integer. For example, even the basis 2, 0, 0, 2 does not include the point 1, 1. In general, we describe a lattice by organizing its basis vectors into an m by n matrix. Manipulating these matrices is at the core of lattice-based cryptography. If lattices are so similar to vector spaces, why bother with this new idea? The answer is that given the integer constraints on lattices, we can define certain problems that are really hard to solve. After all, the hardness of factoring is what makes RSA so secure. By finding hard problems that are easy to construct but hard to crack, we can develop new a new method for public key cryptography. The particular advantage of lattice problems is that there is no efficient algorithm, classical or quantum, that can solve these problems in better than exponential time. For example, the most famous problem with lattices is to find the shortest vector in a given lattice. For the example that we just worked, this wouldn't be too hard, but when working with vectors with 500 entries, it's actually quite difficult, and finding an exact answer takes exponential time. Instead of exploring this problem though, we will look at a different problem that will lead to an actual example of a public key cryptosystem. Just like an RSA, Alice chooses a private key and and publishes a public key. Then Bob uses the public key to encrypt a private message and sends his encrypted message back to Alice. Using her private key, she can easily decipher his message, but an eavesdropper must solve a very hard problem to find out what exactly Bob sent. In this case, that hard problem is called learning with error. Alice and Bob choose a random matrix A with dimensions n by m that is public. The only note about A is that each of its entries is actually taken mod q for some fairly large integer q, and that integer is also public. Alice then chooses a private vector called x. x is unique because each of its m entries is either a 0 or a 1, binary. She computes a times x equals u and publishes the u vector as her public key. Crucially, this multiplication is actually a collision-resistant hash function, and it is therefore very difficult for an eavesdropper to determine x. So Bob now has the tools to send an encrypted message to Alice. Bob computes two vectors, b1 and b2, and will send them both to Alice. First, Bob chooses a secret random vector, s, with m entries. Now b1 is defined as s times a plus e1, where e1 is yet another random vector with m integers, except that now the magnitude of the entries in e1 must be quite small. To compute b2, Bob takes s as before but this time multiplies it by Alice's public key u, adds a different error term, e2, with the same description, but different values, and then finally adds a third term, bit times q over 2, where the bit is his message, a 0 or a 1, that he wants to send, and q over 2 is an integer of substantial magnitude mod q 
that is also much larger than any error values. In general, error is much less than q over 4. So that was a lot of details uh, to make the equations precise, but here is the interesting part and what you should really take away. Alice can find out if Bob sent a 0 or a 1. She multiplies b1 by her private key x. Then she takes the difference of b2 minus b1 times x. By distributing the x in the first equation, we can expand out and write b1 times x equals s times u plus e1 times x. The su terms cancel in the subtraction, leaving just e2 minus e1x plus bit times q over 2. The key insight is that the parenthesized term is quite small compared to q over 2. So if the bit is 0, the expression will evaluate to something very close to 0, and Alice will recognize that Bob sent her a 0. But if Bob sent a 1, then the magnitude of the value will be quite far from 0, and Alice will be able to, to discern that he sent a 1. Why is this problem hard? Well, the algorithm I just described made no mention of the learning with error problem. But we know that cracking the crypto system above is as hard as solving the learning with error problem. And we think that the learning with error problem is hard in the, in the same way we think factoring is hard on standard computers. We don't have a good way of cracking it. So what exactly is learning with error? Here's a picture of a simplified lattice in R2. And we think of the matrix A from our problem as providing the basis vectors for this lattice. The lattice interpretation is that given some point B2 near a particular lattice point S, trying to recover the exact entries in S is hard. This problem is called bounded distance decoding and is strongly believed to be hard enough to be the basis of a cryptographic system. Now that you have seen a brief introduction into lattice-based cryptography, I recommend taking a look at the many other hard problems on lattices and their applications to several different crypto systems that have already been developed.